Hello, dear listener and viewer. This is Kardec Radio at 11 p.m. We are here to renew our thoughts and feelings so we can better produce words and actions. And today we'll be studying chapter 41 of the book Seifa de Luz. Harvest of Light, it brings to us new understanding about ourselves, life, and empowers us. It's a blessing. Emmanuel certainly will bring today a new take regarding resources. Resources that are of all kinds. We often think resources are only material things, but are they really? only material. What is the source of all the resources in life, including the material ones? Where do they begin? The main question for us is, what is the spring of resources? Sources and resources. What is it? Let us meditate on this question. As Emmanuel invites us to a beautiful, beautiful understanding. Do you often think that only the people who are wealthy and resourceful are the ones who decide about the destiny of our lives in the planet? That's pretty much what Emmanuel is going to address. He is going to address precisely this question. Do you think that the people who are wealthy are the ones who dictate the pace of our lives? Do you think somebody who is poor, materially speaking, does not influence the planet as well? and to a greater extent than we imagine. Let us think about this. Do you think the discarnates who do not have the material wealth that we're talking about, do they play a role in the progress of the planet? Aha, uh -huh. now we got you, right? I see wonderful friends here with us. Sunshine is here with us. Carol Correa is here. Hello, Carol. Dulce. Hi, Dulce. Paula. How are you, Paula? Valeria Benfica is here with us. Celia Lancaster. Katia Yushkak. Hello, Katia. Livia Moraes. Chris Anastasia. And Adilson. Friends are coming in. Are you prepared? Can we begin? Chapter 41. From the book Seifa de Luz in Portuguese, Harvest of Light. We're going to talk about resources. Let us first read the chapter and then talk about it. Resources. Emmanuel begins the chapter by quoting Jesus as written in Luke chapter 12. Verse 15, watch out, be on your guard against all kinds of greed. Life does not consist in an abundance of possessions. Emmanuel, in four paragraphs, explains to us, often, when we refer to property, we immediately recall possessions and possessions of material expression. And we recall the image of our friends who bear commitments to the earthly fortune as if they alone were responsible for the balance of the world. However, in so doing, we unconsciously sleep in the escape of our own duties exempting us from our obligations. Symbolically, we all retain capital to move 
around. Since in each regenerative or evolutionary phase in which we find ourselves, we are followed by valuable credits of time through which divine providence considers us equal by necessity and simultaneously differentiates us from one another by the individual application we make of them. Thus, we are all not only called, not only are we called to employ money, but also health, condition, profession, ability, understanding, culture, relationships, and other possibilities that we hold in favor of others because we are valued or depreciated by our own actions, enriched or pruned in our resources by the accounting of eternal justice. Therefore, let us remain attentive to the small opportunities of helping that are offered to us every day. Let us take advantage of the small opportunities as much as possible because if our reserves of time are actually being deposited in our service fund to our neighbor at the bank of life, the wallet of spontaneous supply will send us wherever we are the dividends of help and happiness that are due to us without even us having to even worry about withdrawing it. Did you know that there is an accounting of eternal justice? Accounting of eternal justice? Accounting of eternal justice. Did you know it? Yes. There is a log of our actions. Everything we do, we say, we feel is, and we think, is registered in our spiritual body. Kardec says it in the book Genesis. Leon Denis repeats in the book After Death. And Emmanuel, Andre Lewis, and many other authors repeat it time and again. There's no escape. But the beauty of this message relies in the fact that he's telling us that you're wealthy in spite of, your, of it all. Including the discarnate spirits. The beginning question we had was, is it possible for us to impact on the collective in spite of material wealth? And the answer is yes or no. Yes. The discarnates impact with their mental force as much as the incarnates. We often, says Emmanuel, we think that only those who are materially wealthy are dictating the paces of life. Not exactly. Go to the book 2,000 years ago by Emmanuel, and we're going to see how a slave who was avenging the senator Publius Lentulus Later, he became a free slave, created a mess in the life of the senator and in the life of the family of the senator. How many bosses, owners of businesses, presidents of spirit centers, coordinators of organizations, could have an easier life or administration if the people who didn't have that position helped them, collaborated. 
So we have equal power in some way and form. And I say this equal, not in terms of material power, but mental power. Mental. Anna, the slave, who becomes the best friend of Livia, the wife of the senator Publius Lentulus in the book 2,000 years ago, she makes the life of Livia much easier. Why? Because she forgets about herself. She became the true Christian and she decided to devote her life to that family and specifically to that friend, Livia, the Roman patrician lady who also became follower of Jesus. But you know, Mentor Joseph always reminds us, saying that Jesus was right. We needed to become meeker, peacemakers, but we don't. Like wild horses, we refuse to be saddled up. And I'll repeat this in Portuguese. Nós temos dificuldade de domesticar o cavalo selvagem e deixá-lo ser selado. We often do not want to be saddled up. We want to ride our own ride. We don't want the good spirits to ride on us, quote-unquote, to use us as instruments. No wonder St. Francis invited us to be an instrument. It's the only position in which we will become truly useful. Settled, settled, S-A-D-D-L-E, up, settled. It's about, you know, in a horse, when you domesticate the horse, you have to little by little uh, help the horse allow you to settle. Okay? Sorry, sunshine. Thank you for asking. And we don't allow. We want to do our thing our way by ourselves. We don't want to do what Anna did with Livia. Forget about ourselves and just surrender to the collective, like Chico Xavier. He helped without discrimination. He helped the poor equally as he helped the wealthiest men or woman who came to see him. We've never heard of Jesus either distinguishing his attitude because somebody had a position. But we spiritists are doing this daily. If somebody is the president of a federation, we treat them one day. If they are not, we treat them another way. What is this? This is not Christianity. And we are expecting that a politician in the next elections are going to solve the problems that we have to take care of. No politician is going to mess up if we don't participate and partake. No politician will solve the problem that the people do not engage to solve as well. Everything is the collective, says Emmanuel in the book, Roteiro, not yet in English. There is a chapter here named Experimentation. We were reading this night, Carlos and I, in our gospel at home, chapter 37. 
and it says the following often often we expect like scientists that are investigating mediumship they expect to be neutral and observe the phenomena thinking that they not they do not partake but he says our mental force is acting energy and our thoughts are objective resources and we're talking about resources tonight and he says each human spirit radiates and absorbs emitting when we emit envy jealousy vanity aggressiveness we will absorb a lot of darkness in ourselves he says we are not going to be able to collect truth and peace if we do not emit it from inside of ourselves that's the beauty of it all are you sad or happy with the news these are good news because Emmanuel is empowering you and I all of us he's saying make no mistake you and the wealthiest person materially you and the poorest you and the discarnates incarnates discarnates everyone you have equal opportunity oh yeah and how come Emmanuel and he says clear-cut he says when we think that only those who have power and money have the responsibility to balance the world we're escaping from our duties surprising very surprising you are responsible for the balance of the world as much as I am responsible but Vanessa how come the president of a country is much more responsible well they have a different type of responsibility but we're responsible if we engage in what they propose or not that's on us and he says here we are called every day to employ not only our money but our health question number one for the next 24 hours are we employing our health to the benefit of all are we employing our conditions to the benefit of all are you multiplying every single talent in your life are you employing your profession to the benefit of all are you employing your abilities to the benefit of all are you employing your understanding to the benefit of all are you employing your culture relationships possibilities in favor of others Emmanuel says and it begins with small opportunities he says let us remain attentive he says pay attention to the small opportunities of helping offering every day of yourself he says we take advantage of the small opportunities to help and then what happens it's as if we are depositing into a savings account he says as we deposit in the service fund of our neighbor in the bank of life immediately there is a portion of it that the accounting of eternal justice deposits in the wallet of spontaneous supply and without noticing we will be receiving help and happiness so if we look around in our lives and we don't find the help that we want or need the happiness that we want or need what is the solution 
keep attentive to the small opportunities of helping others. But Vanessa, isn't that selfishness? No, it's compliance to God's laws. We are supposed to be compliant to God's laws. It's the love of God. How much do you love God? At the end of the day, that's the question. If we love God, we help others. If we adore God, if we worship God, we help others. We do not look at the watch when we're serving. We don't want to hurry up and rest when we have people who are in need in front of us and we never ever expect anything in return because God is the one that uh, does the logging, the log of our deeds, the accounting of eternal justice. So today we learned a few expressions. Spiritism is science, you know it. And Emmanuel is giving to us new understanding that there is a bank of life, there is Bank of America, there is Wells Fargo, there is Bank of Brazil, there is Bank of this, that and the other, and there is the Bank of Life. Do you have an account there? Yes, you do, and I do too. Yes. And there are people working in the accounting of the eternal justice. And you have a wallet of spontaneous supply that will only be filled up with happiness and help when we start depositing in the fund, the service fund to our neighbor. When we start depositing there, the bank of life will inevitably start computing the dividends of help and happiness that will go to our wallet of spontaneous supply. Spontaneous means whenever you need, the help is already there. If it's not there yet, it may be a test or it may be that we still need to do more and will never stop. The good spirits, they keep on doing this. That's what they do 24-7. The pure spirits are even beyond it. We cannot even imagine, but that's our duty. The duty to love God, as Rihanna is saying, by helping others. That's the only way. And there are so many ways of helping. Fraternity without borders, in your spiritist communities, in your religious temples, churches, outside of it, at work, in the streets. Nobody needs to give us vouchers to say, go help, you help spontaneously, because one day people will also help you spontaneously without you asking for it. These are the resources. So I bet that by now we're feeling wealthier than we imagine. Right? Are you feeling wealthier? Because he's saying, and I will repeat, we, not only are we called to employ money, but also health, condition, profession, ability, understanding, culture, relationships, possibilities. John DeRosa is saying those little and apparently insignificant things that we do mean more than we understand. That's the way to go, John DeRosa, eternal friend. And he says, let us take advantage of the small opportunities to help others. And we will find ourselves with the wealthy wallet of spontaneous supply in which we'll find 
help and happiness. How about that? Wonderful news. We can't wait for the next one. And the next chapter, well, what is this? Rudy saying, oh, Rudy, there are many centers in LA. Yes, you can go to the website spiritist.us and you will find lots of centers that are in the LA region, okay? So, tomorrow when we come back, feeling wealthier, what is the exercise again? Observe the small opportunities to help. Every day, beginning at home, beginning with your body, beginning with the closest ones, help, and then paying attention. Now, tomorrow, if it's not enough, in the curriculum of Emmanuel, the sequel of chapters are so educational because he's going to talk about our relationships. You want a teaser? I'll give it to you. Chapter 42, it's reasonable that we always be careful not to extend evil to the path of others. <gasps> I didn't know I'd do this. Me neither. Oh my gosh. Is that possible that we extend evil to the path of others? No, I don't want to feel guilty. Me neither. But we need to clean it up, to adjust ourselves, and to trust the good inside of us. Seeking the good begins inside of us. I am a child of God. You are a child of God. That affirmation, I truly believe, inside of my core, that my essence is divine, that your essence is divine, and that we are like a, a sunflower gravitating towards the light of God because we're bathed by it. So tomorrow when we come back, we'll have more. So we refine ourselves, sculpt ourselves, and keep on marching towards the light. After all, we're daily harvesting the light of God's love. Dear friends, lots of blessings. Let us pray and take advantage of the small opportunities to help others. A big hug, and until tomorrow, God willing.